Sundi ni rafiki very deep. Very very deep. Wakati jubili ilikuwa naundwa, yendi we alikuwa natumwa na wana deputy rais hapa kwangu. We are very deep friends, very very deep brothers, na Sudi asante ni sana. Karibu, karibu, karibu. I want to thank the delegates and party members for the honor bestowed on me as the presidential candidate. With humility, I accept the nomination. Asante ni sana. I have a speech here, which I will try and make short. Asababu hii, unajua ku accept nomination last month kuzumza kimombo kidogo. Hata watu wainje watusikia, sindio? So please, uh, please allow me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not just another party delegates congress. It is the day marking a turning of a new leaf for our country. A new chapter. Itweka. When the party leader and I first discussed my joining Safina as the proposed presidential nominee, I fully understood the challenge and the opportunity. You bestowed upon me a responsibility and duty, not just as a resilient Safina party, but more critically, on behalf of millions of great Kenyans, we are ushering in a new chapter for our country. I accept this, deep, with this task with deep obligation, unshakable resolve, and complete dedication, all the while being aware of its burdens and decision decisive importance. Together, we will build a firm foundation. Our goal is very clear. We are an instrument of, of, of trans transformational and systemic change. We are ushering in Itweka, a break from the old order of personalities, positions, and unmitigated greed for power. It is our resolve to give our country a different leadership, to cement a progressive, irreversible gains in our governance and institutional arrangements. The system must be reset to ensure no one is left behind. Every Kenyan, every community, every corner of this country must enjoy the fruits of our individual and collective sweat. We must have total victory. I repeat, we must have the 99% of Kenyans have total victory August 9th, 2022. Itweka! Yeah. <laughs> Safina Party has a storied history of being an instrument of real change, even in moments of adversity. I stand for the presidency of this party to create an alliance of all Kenyans. And I want to read something, because one thing, one question I have had throughout is why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I want to be categoric. Categoric. What you are in this world, when you reach my stage and age, you understand fully what it wake a moment is. In every man's life, there comes a moment when one must search for a cause, a work, an ideal under which he must give himself. Whether he says yes or no is a challenge to be determined in the future. There comes a moment when we become tired of trying to fill a bucket that is leaking. From inside, 
as we must get a new vessel. There comes a moment in a man's life when to get where we have to go, where there are no doors or windows, we must walk through walls. There comes a time in a moment of a man's life when he must choose to stand or run. A moment when you must look up the bench and you have to say to yourself, can't anybody play this game better? And you realize that you must be the one. There comes a time when a decision by a man to get into the arena has often been made by the difference between the greatness or mediocrity of a nation. That is why I am in this. The system is rigged and is broken. It is for the very few. There was a time, as you saw here, my party leader stood up from his offices in Electricity House. He was one of the most successful lawyers at the time. And he came out of his profession to risk his life to fight for the human rights liberation, second liberation, which we have today. Kenneth Stanley Jindo Matiba is another one such hero. This is not necessarily done by the people who are in politics. It takes all of us, especially the young people I see here, to say this time, this time we are going to be involved. No matter what, it is our time, it is our lives. <laughs> Kenya is a country of firsts. We waged an armed struggle against the British colonialism, grabbing our country. We won Itweka. We fought single party dictatorship. We won Itweka. We fought in peacetime for a new progressive 2010 constitution that secured the rights and dignity of every Mwananchi in this country. We won Itweka. Our courts, which have been in the forefront, the forefront of ensuring those rights in that constitution are upheld, protecting the constitution, had a landmark ruling in 2017, where they nullified a presidential election, a first on this continent. continent we won Itweka. We also have, for the young women here, Kama Mume Sahau, the first Black African Nobel Peace Prize winner, Wangare Madai. We won Itweka. But Kenya is at a peril. Despite all these national milestones, repeated government failures have brought the country to its knees. At independence, we inherited a very dangerous virus, Kamai Corona. It has been mutating in every election cycle since 1964, taking different names, taking different colors, taking different shapes. The second generation of the original virus is positioning itself to mutate into a third variant. The Virusi Hatari. It is another 60 years of slavery and deprivation in the making. Hatari iko mbele yetu. Our concerns must be with the future generations. The world is changing. What platform are we giving them? The old order must die. It must be wiped out. We must end transactional politics. Itweka. Our country has been mortgaged to crippling debt, killing economic activity, incomes, opportunities for our young people. Our young people have lost purpose. They cannot see their future. 
Their dreams and aspirations have been shattered. Kweli ama si kweli? We must never pay a debt that has been borrowed so that people steal. Kweli ama si kweli? Every cent must be accounted for. There's propaganda out there. Ya kwamba Kenya is the sixth wealthiest nation in Africa. Mumesikia hiyo? Out of, let me give you some bare facts. Out of 17 million employed Kenyans, 17 million, muna mumesikia hiyo? Only 79,000 earn 100,000 shillings a month. 100,000 shillings a month. That is less than $1,000 ulimwengu. That is 0.5% of the people of the workforce of Kenya who earn 100,000. See you near Ibu Sana. Out of every 100 Kenyans, 53 today cannot put food on the table. You near Ibu Amatsi Ibu. We are talking about fellow Kenyans. There was a time, it was 38, not too long ago, 10 years ago. In February of this year, I was in 2020, the central bank governor, Ili was we are distorting their mouths. The central bank governor faulted the country's economic structure, which has been delivering growth without job creation or rising income. Yani unaonesha GDP is rising, but the jobs and rising income do not exist. In 2020, the national census data puts unemployment rate at 39%. Yani, in figures, 5.4 million people do not have jobs. This is quoting a national social economic disaster. Kenyans talk about corruption. It is not corruption. This is called state capture. Itweka. Today's business daily. Ya leo. Inasema out of a survey of 146 146 countries in the world of unhappiness. Yani the top being the happiest, the bottom of 146 being the unhappiest. Kenya yiko 119 unhappy. Hey, mumejaribu. 119 unhappy. Kwanini? The biggest single reason is corruption. Corruption. State capture. The state has been taken over by economic terrorists. Washindwe. 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 State capture has not only suffocated Kenyans, it has made it impossible for our small businesses to thrive and grow. It has captured and stolen our health, our education, our livelihoods, our social security. It is parasitic, predatory, virus, virusi. It is cruel. It has no heart. It has no human face. We have suffered the chain of governments and leaders who are oppressive, who do not care, and have exercised very poor judgment. Kenya now is at a pivotal moment. With a unity of purpose, we did find in its economic and political landscape, this is the defining moment. The country is now in need of bold, visionary, caring leadership. Caring leadership. It wake up. It wake up. Itweka 
Itweka. Problems, the problems we face are the product of 60 years of political governance failures. In the African culture, itweka, kwa sababu ni lazima, labda nyi ya mujui ni nini. Itweka is a revolutionary call to change leadership from one generation to another. When life has become unbearable, see it's unbearable. From an old leadership to fresh leadership. From old ways to new ways. Na si kubembeleza, najua revolution si ya kubembeleza. We have had a national decline of our nation. The tools of yesterday cannot meet the needs of today and tomorrow. This national decline, rather than national greatness, has spoiled this God-blessed nation. We need a breath of fresh air, of progress and determined dedication in our motherland. We are in the midst of a historic transitional moment. We must chart this radical course. This is beyond business as usual era. It is a moment of bold forward thinking leadership. A time to say no more. A time to say resilience, innovation, competitiveness must meet the needs of this nation. That should be the cornerstone of our leadership. Economic security is national security. We must and we have a decisive obligation to ensure in economic inequalities are breached. Social mobility must be breached. There is no point of having a country of 1% billionaires and 99% poor people. Kuna mana. Aina haja ata kidogo. Look at our SMEs. We are going to partner with the private sector to develop a conducive environment for industrial growth and investments in manufacturing. We are going to break down the cost of doing business, improve productivity, and reduce the regulatory demand that stifles the growth of SMEs. At Unambiwa, you need a thousand licenses to start your business. This will be record-breaking. In a record-breaking period, will attract new productive investments. A lot of this we'll talk more when we come to manifesto. In agriculture, I want to just explain a little bit here about the disparities. In agriculture, agriculture contributes 34% of what we produce in this nation, GDP. Lakini vizuri mujue, kwa to the exchequer, it is only contributing 2%. 2% over a third of our, what we produce, only 2% is going to the exchequer. In contrast, manufacturing contributes 8% of GDP. In 2012, it was 17.5%. And contributes 17.5 percent of revenue. We may shika here figures. When a deputy president, najua najua huku kwenu ni majani chai. Na majani chai na chaka mujiwe. Simu najua ketepa. Simu najua ketepa. Ketepa. If you go to where the deputy president comes from, and Isaac Ruto here Mweshmua, you will see. The farmers, women and young people especially, picking tea all day. Ata kukiwa nambua. Hiyo ketepa chai goes through a little process in a factory hapa Kenya. Lakini what you don't know, ni hakuamba hiyo chai inaenda ulaya. Inaenda ulaya. Inaenda Dubai. From Dubai, it comes back in Atiba gambao nyi munanunua hapa. Na imetoka hapa. Ketepa tea that you drink, none of it is manufactured here. 
That is how sad this story is. Very sad. Cheap and reliable energy must be a key driver for economic productivity and competitiveness. We guarantee energy supply, green energy, competitively priced, economically friendly, and meeting a basic requirement for competitive economy. Our energy security will be focused on four objectives. Secure, plentiful, diverse energy supply, robust, reliable infrastructure, competitive and stable energy pricing. We will aggressively pursue opportunities presented by the global decarbonization agenda, including green hydrogen and its derivatives. An efficient and effective transport system is vital for this economy. And let us get this right. They like to show showbiz mingi apa. But I'll just give one small example. We are all in Nairobi here. There are two reasons why Nairobi is plagued with traffic. Big traffic problems. Moja ni serikali iko ndani katika katikati ya mji wa Nairobi. So government services, everybody comes in. The second ni transit, matatus. Ukitaka kutoka hapa Bomas kwenda Mbakasi you must go to the center of town unabadilisha matatu unashika ingine. Hapo ni kweli ama si kweli? That congestion causes that traffic. Instead of building a highway in the middle of the city, Jew, all we are going to do simply in Hivi is do ring roads. Si munajua ring roads? Ukiwa hapa, ukitaka kwenda mbakasi, you don't need to go to town. Unaenda tu. Ukitaka Westlands, iko upande huu. Ring roads solve traffic problems. In China, there's a place called Shanghai. Mumesha sikia huku? Huku Shanghai, iko na watu 18 million. Hakuna jam. Hakuna jam. Hakuna jam. jam. 18 million. Jam ya saa tatu wa subui na saa sita usiku is the same. Kama kazi yako iko 15 minutes away, it is 15 minutes away, saa tatu wa subui ama saa sa, 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 sa sita usiku. Mumeshika hiyo? Life is the same throughout the day. 18 million people. Sisi ni watu wachache hapa 4 million. Situnaweza? Itweka. Meona wa vijana wengi hapa. Sasa hii mambo ya bundles na digital na sijui nini. Kwa hesabu yetu tumefanya. Bundles zetu zetu yote. To give people 2,000 shillings worth of bundles. Hiyo ni, ni pesa mingi. Ni mwimu sana. That is something that would, is affordable by this country. Because what we want to do, unajua, kuna conquest agenda, na agenda ni information. We want you to get bundles, because that is where job creation, self-employment, creativity inatoka. Kweli ama si kweli? Kweli ama si kweli? We want the world to download you. Sinyi muna download the world. Muna shika? Hiyo ndiyo conquering who? kuinje isiwe ni kitu ambao nyinyi you are being conquered all the time na information ya huko itweka itweka hii kitu ni very long I don't know why they made it so long here I think I'll give my speech I want to articulate kwa sababu the speech is very long I want to articulate something that's very touching to my heart. You know, we are a country that must today, and from today on, 
say you cannot be happy when you see your fellow Kenyan hungry. But you are Kimila Zazamani. Your neighbor never went hungry. The other day, I saw a truck, a food relief, ambao ilikuwa ime overturn hapo Roisambu. Muliona hiyo? And I saw people in Roisambu going for that food. Na ujue hiyo uchakula inaenda kwa wengine ambao hawana. But they are so hungry, nani hapa tu Nairobi? Hapa. We cannot talk about the pride of a nation when our people do not have anything in their stomachs. We cannot. Indra Gandhi in India said the pride of India will only be returned when there is nothing like famine, when there is nothing like a hungry Indian person. And when she did her green revolution in India, today we skimu India ambao ananja munamskia. You cannot even imagine. Those were world headlines just about 30, 40 years ago. Now, the population of that country, not even the landmass of Africa, the population of India is 1.3 billion. Na kuna mutu wanaenda usiku nyumbani kilala na nja. Wapigie makofi wale. Let me talk to our skilled human capital. This is a globalized world. We must think locally. We must think globally and act locally. We have the potential of transforming all our young people's lives. Our education system is one of the highest on this continent. We must bridge the gap between learning outcomes and future challenges. We must recognize this is a rapidly changing world. We cannot have children sitting on stones and dilapidated classes anymore. Itweka! Itweka! To the youth and women of this country, I want to talk to you with my heart. Gender parity and youth inclusion is a fundamental principle of sound governance, fairness, and equity. We will advance gender equity, women empowerment as part of our broader commitment to inclusive economic growth. There's a fair chance for everybody to have their share of our national cake. You are the young people, 76% of the population of this country. Itweka! Itweka! Najua, I was here a little while ago when ANC party leader launched in front of my good friends, what he called an earthquake moment. I want to give you the significance of the ark. The significance of the ark. We have committed that this is now the period of economic revolution. Every Kenyan must attain what is guaranteed and enshrined in Article 43 of our constitution. Your social and economic rights guarantee the following. Amuskize, yani iko kwa katiba. It guarantees food in your stomach. It guarantees and says you have a right to education. You have a right to water and sanitation. You have a right to health. Let nobody act as though they are doing you favors. This is not about favors. It is your right. It is your right. Noah's Ark came at an 
interesting period in biblical history. Noah was 600 years old. God released the rains that lasted 40 days and 40 nights, causing the floods. Noah and his wife and sons and their wives, along with animals, were taken aboard the ark. They were spared the flood and survived. But every living thing outside the ark was destroyed in the waters of the flood. The flood symbolizes the turbulent times and challenges a country is experiencing due to greedy and selfish decisions of leaders who lack vision for the future of their country. These decisions have led to the current sorry state of our wonderful nation, characterized by high debt, joblessness, and the high cost of living. These floods ushered in a reset in the world. You had my good friend Musaliam Davadi say earthquake, earthquake. What comes after an earthquake? Tsunami, tsunami. What comes with a tsunami? Floods, floods, floods. Na nani ataokoa inchi out of floods? Safina, Safina, Safina. Let me announce here today that those who have played a part in the destruction of the rule of law, the economy, and the livelihoods one day will be brought to book and held accountable. Itweka! Itweka! We can no longer stand by and watch passively. The current social contract that has failed and collapsed as stewards of the people, our leaders have abused the responsibility vested in them at the expense of the citizens. And they are trying to find their way back. A new social contract and covenant must be established for the people of Kenya to move forward to greatness. I conclude. As Safina, this is our social contract and mine. We are committed to renew the social contract for the people of Kenya. Itweka. We will rebuild trust and social cohesion away from the past. Itweka. We commit to strengthen governance and accountability for the sake of present and future generations. Itweka. We commit to take the time to rebuild our country after the flood of corruption and inequity. Itweka. We will undertake to ensure that each and every Kenyan exercises their right to live a decent and dignified life as enshrined in Article 43 of our Constitution. Itweka, 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 asante ni sana. Good, good. Fuck yeah. 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 yeah.
Safina Fagia wote Tuomoke pamoja Asanteni uh, The party leader Mr. Honorable Paul Muite His Excellency Our aspirant Jimmy Richard Wanjigi, His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Mweshimiwa Ruto, on my right, Her Excellency Nzisa Wanjigi, uh, former Chairman and the initiator of Council of Governors and also the party leader of Chama Chamashinani, Honorable Isaac Ruto, Mweshimiwa Gashagwa, the MP of Madira constituency, Mweshimiwa Oscar Sudi, from Kapseret, Mweshimiwa Didmas Baraza from Kimilili, Mweshimiwa Kimani Shungwa, Member of Parliament Kikuyu, Mweshimiwa Ket Waruguru, Member of Parliament Laikipia, the Chairman, the Secretary General of Safina Party, and all the dignitaries. Hamjambo. Pamoja with the beautiful delegates and the beautiful Kenyans in the house. Hamjambo. Now I take this opportunity to welcome you and tell you that the journey to change has begun. It is said that change is inevitable. And if you cannot change, Change will change you. So I want to take this opportunity to recognize also the leaders, the delegates from all the regions. Maybe we will just wave. We have leaders from the coastal region and people from coastal region here, the delegates. Asante. We have Upper and Lower Eastern. Wako Kwanyumba. Asante. We have uh, Northeastern Kenya, Wako Kwanyumba, Nawaona. Uh, we have Mount Kenya, the people of Mount Kenya, Asante, Nawaona. We have the great people of Nairobi, Nairobi County, Asante, Nawaona. We have Western and Nyanza, Asante, Asante, Asante. Okay. Yangu yatakuwa machache. First, I will invite the leaders present. I'm sorry, I forgot to recognize uh, the nominated senator. Isaac Mwaura is also in the house. Apigiwe Makofi. And because of that, we will go quick because of time. I will invite, we will start with Isaac Mwaura to speak on behalf of the senators in the house. Karibu Mwishimiwa. Just a quick word with the people. Safina! Safina! UDA! UDA! Thank you very much. The party leader, the presidential candidate of Safina Party, the Honorable J.W. Jim Wanjiki, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, William Samuel Ruto, the party leader, 
and mentor Paul Kibugi Mwite and all protocols observed. I am very delighted to stand before you here today because this is very momentous. This journey to come to your NDC started through a tweet that a Kenyan thought that Jimmy Wanjigi should have learned from Isaac Moora and others who are chased away from our, from our former political party. And I followed the thread and we ended up meeting with Jimmy at the NDC of UDA. We struck a chord so much so that we left each other yesterday at 1.30 a.m. as he was preparing for this NDC. A very important note as well is for Safina party leader Paul Kibugi Mwite who served for 20 good years as a member of parliament for Kabete. A man who was born out of the six young Turks and he fought his way to liberate Kenya in the second liberation of this country. Let's clap for him. I met him for the first time in 2007 at a meeting at Silver Springs where our Magata, you are present, and His Excellency the Deputy President then was sent by ODM to represent the party or the movement as we were clamoring for minimal reforms before the general election that were coming. I stand here today as quite unlikely the first person with albinism to be both a member of parliament in the National Assembly and the Senate. This has come as a result of the struggle by Safina, a party that actually fought and ensured its then Secretary General, Richard Leakey, actually went into parliament on the wheelchair. And when he was made the head of public service, Paul Muite, as chairman, nominated Joseph, Josephine Senior the first blind woman to become a member of parliament. Safina is a very inclusive political part. It, it is out of fighting for the constitution that the position of those with disabilities and marginalized groups was entrenched. And that is how I got nominated in the National Assembly and now in the Senate. Safina has paid the price for the liberation of the most people who do not have the voice. But be that as it may, today, is actually Itweka. Itweka! Itweka! I, Isaac Moora, a son of a single woman, decided to speak against the idea that only people from certain families can be president of the Republic of Kenya. You cannot have a Kenyatta, a Nodinga, a Moi, and that like that. Even you can be president of the Republic of Kenya. It is possible. So Jimmy Wanjigi, your dreams are valid. As a result, just like Paul Mwiti and others did, we are the new left. I pay the price. I was in court for 10 good months. I had seven court cases. I appeared in court over 30 times. I was dismissed, chased out of parliament like a dog on 7th of March. And they said, sent DCI to me and drones to my house. They had a gang of 10 people to finish me and eventually they put a travel ban against me just simply because of saying a son of a lowly person can rise to become the president of the Republic of Kenya. <laughs> Those who did so, the handshake brothers, I forgive you. I forgive you. But the fusion of the monopoly of government and the fusion of the monopoly of opposition cannot deter Kenya from the third liberation of economic emancipation. Today we stand here today and we are very glad because we have William Samoy Arap Ruto, a man who rose from obscurity as a chicken seller, a God-fearing man to become the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. His candidature emboldens all of us sitting here today that we too count in this republic. Jimmy Wanjigi, Welcome to the Hustler Nation. Let's march together. We need your connectivity. We need your organization skills so that we can win 50 plus 1, if not 70%. You have a room. And I know that at some point you sit down with the Deputy President and also agree to support him because he's the one on the lead. And I believe Safina will fall through just like Paul Moite said. Our difference, as I conclude, 
is that those who are fighting us believe that it is their privilege to rule over Kenya, that we are slaves, like, like we are rent seekers, and we must be remaining very grateful that they gave us an opportunity to serve. We want to tell them, no, the tree of freedom was fought with blood. We shall fight for our space because we too count. Finally, they want to change the constitution because they face ex existential crisis. One of them was finishing 10-year term. He couldn't run again. The other one was getting too old. He's 77. Let him retire. Just like Paul Mwite has left Safina to Jimmy Wanjigi. They stand for the constitutional change. We stand for economic liberation. They are looking for power. We are looking for empowerment. They talk about trickle down. We are looking for bottom up. So that we can empower our people. Let's join together Safina, UDA and all like minded. Because the strength of the pack is a wolf. And the strength of the wolf is a pack. I thank you. Makofi, Makofi, Komeshimiwa. Asante, Asante. Next, I will want to invite uh, the Member of Parliament of Madira Constituency, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa. Karibu. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the Honorable Jimmy Wanjigi on your nomination as presidential candidate for Safina. I say congratulations. It's a step in the right direction. You have been in private business. You are now welcome to the public world and make change from where the real action is. From uh, I want to say that uh, we in the UDA and Safina, we have a point of convergence in that all of us are saying the priority for this country is economic liberation. And therefore, we form a strong team and I'm sure along the way we'll get some convergence so that we look at numbers. Because at the end of it all, on the 9th of August this year, the numbers will make a decisive action in this country and we begin the journey for economic liberation. And we want to say, Jimmy Wajegi and Safina, we have a job to do with all of us in UDA to liberate this country from state capture. The economy of this country is down. All businesses are shutting down. Nobody is making profit. It's only businesses run by one family that are thriving. And this cannot be. We must free the people of Kenya from state capture. We are looking at a situation where the milk industry, through state capture, there was a deliberate scheme to monopolize that industry. Where the owners of that industry from one family, set the prices for milk from the farmers, and they also set the prices of how much to give the consumers. And as a result, you exploit both the farmer and the consumer. This must be brought to an end. And this country is steering at family capture. The project that is being pushed around is a deliberate scheme of family capture where three families have sat down and decided that they want to rule Kenya for the next 200 years. And uh, we have the Kenyatas, the Jaramogis, and the Mois. And these three families have been sitting down and saying, despite the fact that the presidency of Mwai Kibaki was the most celebrated in terms of economic empowerment, in terms of empowering the Kenyan people, those three families are saying that the Kibaki presidency was indeed a mistake. What should have happened is that the three families should continue exchanging. We had the Kenyatta, we had the Moi, they say the Kibaki was, was a mistake. Now we have the Kenyatta, 
they want us to go to the Odinga, then we go back to the Moi, then we go back to Kenyatta. Is that possible? It's not possible. So the people, the people of Kenya must stand up to the planned family capture and come up with the leadership that will put the interest of the people of Kenya first. And the three families are not interested about the people of Kenya. It's about protecting their family and business interests. And the people of Kenya must stand up to that. So the people of Safina, as you fagia water, you need to get the rubbish you fagia. We put it in a wheelbarrow and take it to the sea. Asante. Asante, asante, mshimiwa. Makofi kwa mshimiwa tena. Round hii naona tukijipanga vizuri. Si kweli? Haya, now let me invite Mama Machachari, mshimiwa wa Laikipia, mshimiwa Kate Waruguru. Your Excellency, my, my good friend Jimmy Wajigi, Mwashimiwa Paul Moiti, Senior Council, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency William Samoy Ruto, Delegates Hamjambo. Hamjambo Tena. Allow me you two to take it up from the Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa to congratulate the Honorable Jimmy Wajigi on your appointment today. We are gathered at this dome today because we believe in your ideology. Safina Party, you have been very vocal from the day, the very day you've started in the ODM Party, fighting for the third liberation of the Republic of Kenya. Allow me to join you today, standing here and speaking on behalf of millions of young men around the Republic of Kenya, to tell you you both and the deputy president, that we Kenyan youth, we are damn tired ya kubebwa ufara katika serikari ambayo tukonayo. Allow me to join you in this conversation. Our forefathers fought off Mzungu. They fought for our land. They fought for education. They fought for healthcare. And we heard the likes of the Honorable Paul Moite fighting for multi-partism, fighting for 2010 constitution. And the biggest question I ask myself today, I, Ketu Arugoro, and many young men below the age of 40, what are we going to stand for in the rebellion, the next rebellion, the car in the current crisis, as far as economical revolution is concerned? Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to invite you into this conversation. This is nonpartisan. This involves every young man in regardless of the political party that you are affiliated to. We are in a Fuliza nation. We are in a country where majority of our young men do not have jobs, both formally and informally. And we are saying that it is our time. We are the majority. We and our women and our mothers, we are saying there is no change for us without us. We must be on the table. And the conversation as it goes, we are saying, we women, we young men, what do you have for us this afternoon? The Honorable Jimmy Wajigi and the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya in the UDA party. I'm inviting all of us to walk into this journey with our heads high. We fight for our space. Majority of our young mothers who do not have jobs, who do not have vibarua, mama fua, boda boda, mama boga, ata wale wanaranda randa kule kwa mita. Tunasema serikari ni yetu sasa. Na wakati wakusema hatubebewi akili ni sasa. Wakati wakusema tumepewa mwelekeo ya kutosha. Tulikuwa kule sagana three, tukasikia tumeambiwa safari ndio hii, barabara ndio ile. Mimi nitamaliza the Honorable Jimmy Wajigi, you are very right. From the time Muzungu left this land, 
We have had the Odingas, we have had the Kenyatas, and we have had the Moys. When are we going to get a chance to get one of us as the President of the Republic of Kenya? When we talk in this conversation, we do not mean that we want people to be poor so that we can celebrate you. We are saying, come as you are. If you have a heart to help, you have a heart to serve, you have a heart for change. And that is why we are saying, if it is time for liberation, then we must join in. Bring like-minded people together. The same way today, we have Jimmy Wajigi, we have William Samoy Ruto, and we have other great Kenyans gathered here, and we are saying, it is itweka, itweka, itweka moment. Thank you very much. Asante Mwishmiwa. And because of time, I'll invite back uh, our presidential candidate, His Excellency Jimar, Jimmy Richard Wanjigi, so that he can invite the other dignitaries. Karibu Mwishmiwa. Haya, haya, haya. Itweka! 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 Sasa unajua, we have very important guests here. And we are competing guests. My fellow competitor, nani competitor? William Samoy Ruto. Had the courage, had the heart to come and say, I'm going to grace the occasion of his fellow competitor, Jimmy Wanjiki. Jimmy Wanjiki. He has done us a great turn. Kuna wengine ambao tuwalika, lakini wakasema, you know, some, if everybody is coming like this, maybe we all can come. But this shows you the spirit of democracy in Kenya. There is enough space for all of us. We don't have to fight. We don't have to be kicked out of Kasarani. We don't. We can compete and we can shake hands as brothers and sisters of this nation. I want you all to be upstanding, to welcome, and please remember, he is the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. My brother, Asante, Asante Sana. Safina Hoye. Safina Hoye. Asante ni Sana. Tafadhali ketini chini. <clears throat> My brother Jimmy Wanjigi. And the Safina Fraternity. I am here this afternoon to share with you this very important moment when you unveil this great Kenyan to compete in the next general election. My friend Jimmy, congratulations for the honor Safina has given to you by giving you their ticket to compete in the next general election. Pongezi sana. And welcome to the competition. Competition brings the best out of all of us. And my coming here this afternoon is out of the realization that um, by competing, the best gets the opportunity to give us the way into the future. We have had challenges in the past of uh, competitors who do not believe in democracy. But as I witness this occasion this afternoon, I can confirm that Safina, having made huge contribution to the democratic space in our country, you have presented a candidate that believes 
in democracy. I take the opportunity this afternoon to congratulate Safina as a party because you leave a trail of democratic gains in our country. Our democratic space would not be what it is why it not for men and women who belong to this party who purposefully made huge sacrifices so that Kenya can be truly democratic. To Safina Party, Pongezi Sana. Congratulations. Let me say two things, one about Jimmy and one about your party leader. Your party leader, Paul Muite, when I was first elected in 1997, and I came to Parliament, I was 31 then, and I met Paul Muite in Parliament. And I remember a fundamental lesson Paul Muite taught me. He told me, young man, I see you are very enthusiastic about supporting your party. But I want to tell you, the best way to support your party is to criticize it when it goes wrong. That was a fundamental lesson to me. <laughs> that you must never be a psychophant. You must never support the wrong things. Then when time comes for you to say what is right, if your party is not doing the right thing, you should stand up and say so. Thank you very much, Paul Muite. That lesson has really helped me in my political journey. Jimmy Wanjiki is a great friend. I have worked with him. He has done many things for me and for our team. Uh, you remember when, I was, uh, when we were in the UDA and NDC, I did disclose that President Uhuru Kenyatta and I, when we decided that we want to re-engineer the politics of our nation by walking away from what was standard, that this community cannot work with this community because of this reason and that reason. The only third person that was in that meeting was Jimmy Wanjiki. And I remember telling him in our NDC that he still keeps the original agreement signed between me and Uhuru Kenyatta. So I don't know when, Jimmy, you are going to deliver that uh, so that I can, keep it, I can keep it as a souvenir. <laughs> but having said that, I have listened um, to Jimmy, and I have heard Safina Fag eh? Fagia Wote. And so I was asking Jimmy, who had seated there, this Fagia Wote, there are some who are being swept out. I'm sure there are some who are being swept in. So in the, pro <laughs> in the process of Fagia Wote, I hope you will sweep our competitors out and sweep all your friends in. Um, let me say just a few things. I have listened to the statement made by Jimmy Wanjiki, and one statement struck me, and that statement is about personalities versus the people. That is the statement that struck me. And that defines the moment where we are in the history of our nation. There is competition between personalities and personality cults and personality politics 
vis-à-vis -vis the people and the institutions that facilitate the people to participate. There are two sides to this competition and the clarity, the difference between the two sides to this competition is like the clarity between day and night. Our competitors believe this is a constitutional moment. We believe, together with Safina, that this is an economic moment in the history of our country. Our competitors believe that this is a constitutional moment because they want to change the constitution to create jobs so that leaders can benefit. We believe it is an economic moment to change the economy, create jobs so that millions of young people and millions of Kenyans can have access to jobs. They believe, our competitors, this is a constitutional moment to change the constitution so that you can give the president more power to undermine the legislature by appointing ministers from the legislature. We believe this is an economic moment to create access to close to 15 million Kenyans who today operating in the space of micro and small enterprise, they have no access to credit and therefore their struggles are harder. We believe changing the economy to create credit for millions of young people is not about leaders, it's about the people. They want to create an opportunity to benefit leaders, benefit members of parliament who already have jobs to be appointed to be ministers. The dichotomy is as clear as day is night. They are looking for jobs for MPs, we are looking for credit for ordinary people, the ones at the bottom of the pyramid. They believe this is an economic moment to create an ombudsman so that we can undermine the independence of the judiciary, which is the language of rulers and despots and dictators. We believe this is a moment, an economic moment, to create economic freedom so that every citizen can operate in a space that respects the rule of law. Good people, they believe and they have facilitated the corruption of the political system to merge the opposition and the government, creating an unaccountable system that promotes conflict of interest, that promotes state capture, that promotes corruption, and that benefits only the corrupt. We believe, as the people of Kenya, that proper political formations with clear checks and balances that respects different political formations with a governing party and an opposition party creates accountability, better use of national resources, and ultimately benefits every citizen and creates a country that leaves nobody behind. So, this contest is as clear and the sides 
are as clear as day is from the night. And that's why I came here because Safina shares the same belief in an economic moment in this election the way UDA does. <clears throat> Finally, na pengine nitasema kwa Kiswahili. Um, tulijenga serikali na tumejenga reli tukajenga barabara karibu kilomita elfu kumi tukaunganisha stima watu milioni nane na nusu kufikia sasa tukatengeneza technical training colleges sasa tumefikisha mia moja hamsini kenya lakini Mahali nimeketi leo naamini serikali tunayotengeneza kwa mapenzi ya Mungu na wale wote ambao tunakubaliana ya kwamba wakati huu ni wakati wa uchumi ni ile serikali ambayo itaweka pesa kwa mfuko ya mwananchi wa kawaida na njia ya kuweka pesa kwa mfuko ya mwananchi wa kawaida ni kuhakikisha kwamba wale vijana karibu milioni ine Jimmy amesema hapa watu milioni tano plus out of that 5 million kati ya hawa wa Kenya ambao hawana ajira milioni tano milioni ine ni vijana na njia ya kuweka pesa kwa mfuko ya hawa vijana ni kuwapangia ajira na ndio tumesema kupitia kwa kubadilisha uchumi tunapanga kuweka pesa katika sekta ya housing manufacturing value addition agro processing ili tuhakikisha kwamba vijana wanapata ajira tuweke pesa katika mifuko yao wajisimamie wasimamie familia zao na wajenge taifa letu It doesn't matter how much you change the constitution until you have a program to create jobs you will never change this country Tunasema ya kwamba njia ya kuweka pesa kwa mfuko ya mwananchi ni kuhakikisha ya kwamba kila biashara biashara ya wale walio chini micro and small enterprises ambazo zina account for 80% ya wafanyabiashara wote Kenya ambao leo wanaangaishwa na fuliza na wanaangaishwa na Mashailok tuwe na credit system ambayo itawawezesha badala ya kulipa 10% per day vile wanafanya saa hizi walipe 10% per year kama makampuni zingine zote na kama inawezekana kwa sababu wao ni biashara ndogo ndogo vile ya kuhakikisha kwamba wanalipa less than 5% per day na bila ya kuwauliza mambo ya ma security mambo ya ma, mambo mengine because there is always a way where you can create security without the security that we all know of title deeds and other things so i share this moment with safina and i want to ask the membership of this great party to work with us as the party leader has said we will work together going into the future because we share in the vision of our country going into the future this is not my day this was the day of safina and the day of my brother jimmy wanjigi my good brother jimmy I wish you well in your journey. I have seen you leave your good office. I have seen you traverse this country. I have seen you during the good times. I have seen you during the bad times and I am confident that you are made of good metal. Pongezi sana my brother Jim. You are a comrade 
walking together into the future. Asante ni sana and God bless you. Thank you, Jimmy. Asante sana. Asante sana. <laughs> Makofi kwa deputy rais. <laughs> Makofi. I, 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 you, 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 are, you, you're made of good metal. Asante, and so are you, my brother. Asante ni sana. God bless you. Asante. God bless you. Thank you, my brother. Makofi. Haya. We have a party leader who is also an old friend, Isaac Ruto Mashinane. Makofi kwa Isaac, Makofi, Makofi, Makofi. Asante sana. Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency Jimmy Wanjiki, my good friend, also the party leader, Bwana Paul Muite, a veteran fighter for the rights of Kenyans. Pamoja na wanasafina hamjambo. Hamjambo tena. You know in Mashinani we say tunaweka tunataka pesa itiririke Mashinani. We share the same socio-economic policies na mrengo wa Kenya Kwanza together with Safina. We believe that this country requires a shift that we can no longer continue to have a few and the rest living in Squela. We cannot continue to allow the older generation to live on the future of the younger generation. It's quite unfortunate that we continue to borrow and squander on your future earnings. We have continued as a country also to continue to discriminate the young generation, to continue to discriminate other Kenyans and plan our country only for the rich. We only talk about the big industry, we only talk about the employed group. No one talks about the 70% or so of Kenyans who are living outside the formal economy. We join you, Bwanawanjiki, and other like-minded Kenyans in moving this country towards a better way of managing resources. As Machinari, we believe we need to devolve more and more because all Kenyans, wherever they live, must continue to share in the natural cake. I want to thank my brother Paul Moite for supporting us as a Council of Governors in the first five difficult years of devolution. Bwana Muite stood with us and the judiciary also delivered on major rulings to ensure that devolution was anchored both in law and in practice. I thank you very much, Bwana Muite, and your brothers, fellow lawyers who assisted us. It's a little bit awkward speaking after the deputy president has spoken because I know why I should shorten the speech. I'm aware of his itinerary, and I'm not going to speak long. I only want to associate Chama Chama Shinani with the fight for a better Kenya and for inclusivity in the Kenyan economy and in ensuring that multi-party democracy 
flourish in our country. And I want to pay homage also to the clerics of the 90s who fought for multi-party democracy and in particular Reverend Timothy Joy. Because of their struggle, we are now living in a free country where various presidential contenders can meet together and share their vision and move together to compete without creating any friction. Thank you very much and God bless you. Sante uh, Now quickly, because of the essence of time, I want to welcome the Member of Parliament of Kimilili constituency, Honorable Didmas Baraza. Karibu. Thank you very much, my good friend. All protocols observed. I also want to take this opportunity to welcome Jimmy Wanjigi to this exclusive club of presidential candidates. And I want to assure him that uh, we in UDA, we value friendship and we believe that uh, if we work together, we will be able to fight the enemies of this country, being unemployment, bad governance, especially where individuals walks to Kemsa and picks billions of shillings, the money that was supposed to assist this country fight COVID-19. I'm particularly more happy because in UDA, the party that's led by the deputy president, today when you meet very many young people on the streets, they will tell you that even if you find yourself in a situation where you have to sweep toilets to earn a living, that even if you find yourself that you have to wash cars to earn a living, that should not kill your dream of being President of the Republic of Kenya because we believe that this year is the year where the lead is going to be lifted, that we can only come from a particular family to be President of the Republic of Kenya. And by so doing, we will work together with all people, all persons who are alive to the fact that the economy of this country need to be changed so that we begin from bottom up, Uchomi Bora, Pesa Mufukoni, and an equitable environment of doing business for all Kenyans, not an, ex not an exclusive club for certain families, so that we can bring the cost of living down and we move forward. As I finish, I want to ask Safina that he please Mukifagia wote Musifagia sisi Fagia wale wakora wali ingia huko kemsa Wacha kukachukua pesa ya COVID-19 Ni maambiwa Juzi na Orita General Atibaada hata ya kuchukua yu pesa Hawa kutosheka Ati kwa merudi imagine Atimbaka kondom pia wamehiba Sijui yu kondom wamepeleka wapi Na nilikuwa na jiuliza kwa nini uyu Paul Mwite wakati alikuwa Ford Kenya. With all his brains, it was difficult for Honorable Paul Mwite to work with the Oginga Odinga, the father of Varela Moro Odinga. Honorable Paul Mwite, ata kama ulijaribu, ukawachia hapo, ukaunda safina yako, sisi bado tunapambana kupeleka kijana ya ule mze to permanent retirement, taretisa. Aenda kae huko, tutamusaidia kama ni neti ya kufuwa samaki, sababu kasi ni kasi, aenda afuwe samaki. Mungu wa bariki. Asante, 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 tuende raka. Ok, next, uh, I want to invite the Honorable Member of Parliament of Kiku Constituency, Honorable Kimani Ishungwa. Karibu. Thank you, Steve. Your Excellency, the Deputy President, the party leader, Safina, who is my predecessor as my member of parliament, the Honorable Paul Mwite, 
and the Safina presidential candidates, my friend and brother Jimmy Wanjigi, Safina delegates Hamjambo. Asante Nisana, I feel honored to stand before this gathering today and address you briefly because this is a party I think whose roots, as Paul Mwite would agree with me and Wamagata, I think this party, the roots is Kikuyu constituency where Paul Mwite came from as member of parliament. But it has grown to be a party that has proved itself over time. From the time Safina was registered, it has served this country even without members of parliament in parliament or MCAs and councillors. It has continued to exist as a political party and strengthened our democracy. And we cannot fail to mention the great work and the huge contribution to the growth of our democracy that the Honorable Paul Muite has played in this country. And I must congratulate my brother, Honorable Paul Muite, because he is a man who appreciates what he is worth and knows how to hand down power and instruments of power within the party and even in the country because for the time I have served as member of parliament for Kikuyu, I have only but benefited from the wisdom of the Honorable Paul Mwite. I came to know Jimmy Wanjige when I was elected member of parliament around 2014 and we have grown and become good friends since then. If you read the Public Investments Committee report on the SGR report, it had a lot of input on information that was given to us by Jimmy Wanjige. And it is indeed Jimmy Wanjige who, over a cup of tea, advised me that we should advise the president not to take that railway beyond Nairobi to what is now called the railway to nowhere into a private farm in Naivasha. But we were never listened to. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate you, Jimmy, and ask you to continue walking and working with us to liberate this country from the economic terrorists that you have just said who are governing this country and who imagine they not only own this country, but they own all of us. It is indeed true that they have come to believe that right after independence and their fathers took over our land, the land our forefathers and our fathers fought for, being the primary factor of production land and the other four factors of production, one of them being labor, I believe these three families, the Kenyatta family, the Moy family, the Odinga family, when they look at the rest of us, they see laborers, they see slaves that should be slaving for them, and we should thank them that we have the privilege to serve them. It is time now to tell them that we are not slaves of three families in this country. We belong to this country, we shall reclaim our country, and we shall end the economic servitude that you have subjected us to. And that is why I join the Safina Fraternity in congratulating my brother Jimmy and asking you a Safina, when I look at this Safina, this ark, kiona ikicheza cheza pale, kiwekwa mugu mbele, yuekwa mbili nyuma, na handles, inakaa kama wheelbarrow. Na naona, tukishikanisha hii wheelbarrow na Safina, tutaweza kukomboa nchi yetu from these people who believe that they own our country and they own us. We must prove to them that if Moi could become president, if Kenyatta could become president, even Jimmy Wanjege can become president, just like William Ruto can become president. And even you seated here, irrespective of where you are born, you can become a president and a leader in this country. And that is a country that we ought to all build. And I want to encourage you, let us work together, even as we go into the elections, let us partner in the economic liberation of our country. Because as the Deputy President has said, this is not a constitutional moment, this is an economic moment. It, can, it is an economic time for us to liberate our economy and our country from the servitude of those 
that believed they owned this country. Na nataka niseme kwa kumalizia haiwezekani ati wale wametuweka kwa shida walizotuweka ndio watakuwa solution ya hizo shida wametuweka. Ile shida and Jimmy engaged me when I was chair budget and appropriations in the National Assembly. And I must confirm here today, Jimmy, that part of the wisdom you shared with me on economic management, I shared it with President Uhuru Kenyatta, and I warned him that in a short two to three years, this country's economy will go to the doldrums if we do not act right. But again, because of state capture, because of conflict of interest, there was nobody to listen to us. We have time now to listen to each other. Between Safina, UDA, and all the other political parties in Kenya Kwanza, we can liberate this country and hand it back to its true owners, the people of Kenya. Asanteni Mungu Abariki. Asante Mwishmiwa, Asante. Poleni, I know you really wanted Honorable Sudi to speak, lakini ameniambia kona homa na sauti mepotea. Lakini naomba asmame ya wasalimie. Just. Wana Savina Oye. Wana Joe Mimi Mundosi ya kiwa hapa Mimi Siongi Yange. Rafiki Yangu Jimmy Wanjigi. Kiongozi wetu wa inji na ibu wa rais. Kiongozi wenzangu wa liyo hapa. Wana Nairobi na wana Kenya Mjambo. Yangu ya takuwa tumaneno mwili peke yake. Ya kwanza, nataka niambia Rafiki Yangu Jimmy pongeze sana. Kwa sababu unajua Jimmy ya mekua mtu wa mkono kwa muda mrefu wa rais Uhuru Kenyatta na William Ruto. Lakini sasa amenuka ameenda kwa kiwango tofauti. Na mimi nataka nikwambie my friend nimesikia ile maneno umesema hapa. Nataka nyinyi wote wenye mnawania rais, mwenye mnasema mnataka pesa mfukoni kwa wananchi wa Kenya, mpunguze kiingereza yenu sasa. Mkutanisho ya akili yenu yote ingie mfuko yao watu. Sababu mimi nataka ni kuambie Jimmy Wanjiki wakati tukua tunapanga mambo mengi huko na ya kutosha awa wanainji wako hapa hata wenye ngomeketi hapa peke yake kuna wengi wao awajui watuta wao wataenda shule fipi kuna wengi wao hata awajui chakule aleo wakipata ya kesho watapata wapi hii ndo mimi nataka ni wambie kitu ya kwanza tunataka mtoto wa mkenya wa Oscar Sudi, wa Jimmy Wanjigi, wao wamekaa hapa na wakenya wale wengine waende shule kwanza inye inafanana. Ya pili, tunataka inji, inye kila mtu wanaenda hospitali atibiwe arudi nyumbani. Tunataka inji ukifika nyumbani, unauliza tukule nini leo. Sio, ukitoka asubui, ujui watoto wanakula nini. Na hiyo ndiyo nasema, mpunguza higi ngeresenyu sasa yote, wakikishe wanaiji wamepeta, pesa, mfukoni, mwenyezi mungu wabariki sana. Aya, mmemsikia? Mmefrai? Aya, na mimi pia ni seme kidogo, sindio? Mimi pia ni mwanasia? Mwanasiasa. Lakini mutaniruhusu. You know, His Excellency, the Deputy President, and His Excellency, our candidate, Jimmy Richard Wanjigi. It is not only you, who has decided to go into active politics as a businessman. There are so many Kenyans today who have understood that being in the business community